everybody, and welcome to today's demo with Erin Sabina, our lovely and faithful host. We're going to be diving into using my teach stone today, especially in your CQI journey. Uh, just a, so a couple housekeeping uh, reminders before we get started. This presentation is going to be recorded, so your mic and camera are going to be off, um, but you can communicate with each other in the chat, which is open now. Um, and you're also able to submit private questions to us that we can see in the Q&A box. Tomorrow, you're going to receive an email with the slides, the recording, and any related resources. So if you come in, came in late or um, you have to go early, no worries, you will get that tomorrow. So I'll hand it over to you, Erin, to introduce yourself. Thanks, Isabella. Um, so I'm Erin Sabina. I will be doing our demo today. I've been with TeachStone a little over six years now. Um, I do a lot of our demos here, so you may have seen me doing some of the other demos. Uh, previously was supporting the South Central portion of the country and recently transitioned to supporting the Western states, our partners out West. Um, so if you're looking for someone to talk to at TeachStone, reach out to me. I'm happy to assist. Um, I am excited to share this platform today that I just think is one of our just most foundational offerings that just provides so much support here. So we can go to the next slide. Uh, so what we're going to discuss today, we're going to go over, my Teachstone does a whole bunch of things. Uh, so one of the things it can do is help you track and report on your class data. So you can input the scores, you can track it, download a report. Um, you're going to use class data to drive individualized professional development, but you can also use it to drive uh, programmatic professional development because you can dive down to the data on various levels. You can leverage the platform to coach your educators, even with limited time and resources. So you'll see all of the supports that are provided direct to the coaches so that coaches can maximize their bandwidth. And then lastly, we're going to discover some of the free opportunities that you have to engage with a community of educators and access some of our responsive resources. So I want to take a moment to pause and reflect. And if you can, uh, in the chat here, put what are some of your biggest challenges that you have in improving interactions in your program? I know right now there are challenges with staffing and recruitment, with turnover and bandwidth, uh, but I would love to hear from those of you who are in attendance right now, what are some of the challenges that you're experiencing? Keep an eye on the chat here, staff turnover, training new staff, brand new teachers. So yeah, so turnover is definitely a big one that we hear a lot about right now. Let's see, are there others coming through? Teachers don't have time. Uh, teachers feel like talking all the time is enough and don't get that the interactions need to be intentional. I like that one. Turnover, shortages, putting out fires. Yeah, so this is teachers in crisis. That's fun. So yeah, there's these are a lot of um, kind of the, the common the common things that we hear nowadays, unfortunately. Um, and a lot of these were common pre-COVID as well. You know, teachers having time to watch videos or do professional development, teachers feeling overwhelmed. I think it's just been exacerbated a little bit during COVID. Uh, so we have a lot of supports within this platform that will help with what some of these challenges are with getting that support to your educators. Okay. And we know the interactions matter now more than ever. There's more children experiencing challenging behaviors. There's more teaching shortages, uh, needing to get some more professional development out there and such. Research validates that focusing on and improving these interactions should not be seen as one more thing. It's not an additional thing to know and to do but really it's the, the foundation. It's the one thing that everything else kind of layers on top of, but these interactions really impact child outcomes. Um, okay, and so the platform we're gonna review here, it's a research-based 
all in one platform. So it's going to provide the tools. So our focus, measure, improve framework, you get all of that within the platform here. And the teachers are getting support. Your coaches can have support. Your administrators can have support. Uh, and so we'll see all of the functionality here within this platform. So I just mentioned our focus, measure, improve framework. Um, so that's our general framework of moving through class implementation. So you start off focusing, what is class? What are interactions? What's the importance of these interactions? How do they impact student outcomes? How do they impact a day in the childcare? Then you measure. So you look at, okay, where do we start? What is our starting point? And where do we need to focus? Uh, think of it like if you're going on a diet, so to speak. So, so you step on a scale so that you know where you are, and then you make uh, decisions on what you're going to do moving forward to achieve your goals. So then that next step is the improvement. You see what your scores are, what you've measured. You then develop a plan to improve those scores based on what you've seen. And then it's continuous. So you come back to the measure again. You see, has that professional development had an impact? How has it had an impact? Where do we need to focus now? It's natural that as you work on one area and that increases, another area might decrease a little bit because you're focusing uh, on this specific area. So how do you kind of keep measuring and improving to get those areas to level out and be consistent and intentional? So the platform that we're gonna go over, the class subscription to the MyTeachStone platform allows for continuous, seamless, and efficient cycles of improvement. So that cycle of improvement that we discussed, you're gonna be able to put the data in, report on that data, analyze it, determine your professional development, come back to the scores, see how the scores have adjusted, see if that professional development had an impact, and now where do you focus? The platform is built on research principles. So we know that what we're providing is uh, meeting some of those foundations that are critical in fostering teacher growth. There's ability to do self-study so educators can focus on where they are most interested. There's ability for coaches to share directly with teachers for coaches to have the professional development. And it streamlines a lot of these key activities. So that's one of the things I love most about this platform is there's so much administrative work that is in a kind of day-to-day -day work. And so with that, as we have these different um, activities and, and you could take a lot of that administrative stuff, the reporting, the determining what professional development I'm gonna do, all of that, take that off of your plate and focus on those interactions, the actual coaching relationship and the interactions that we know are so important, not just between teachers and children, but also between administrators and educators, coaches and educators, those adult adult interactions are important as well. Okay, so on that note, let us jump in. Um, and I am just going to real quick see if I can figure out how to turn off my notifications because I am getting notifications still. How to do it on this computer. Okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, so do y'all see, um, does it say, and Isabella, if you can come off mic because I can't see you anymore. Does it say Elsie's dashboard? You see that? Yes, it does. It's all, all good. Right. Awesome. Okay. So you're going to get, if you purchase the class subscription, the MyTeachStone platform is this dashboard that you're already using, um, that you might have your certifications on, uh, different trainings you've taken. We're just adding additional tiles here. So we'd be adding observation data, adding learning resources. And then if you don't already have community, you would be getting community as well. So I'm going to come in here to observation data to begin with. And so you'll see when I'm in here, so I'm logged in as a coach. There are four different roles you can have in the platform. You can be a teacher, an observer, a coach, 
and or an administrator. And when you're doing that, uh, those different roles have various functionality. So with that functionality, you can have multiple roles in the system, but you have to be kind of toggled into that specific role for what it is that you're doing. So for example, LC right now is both, we'll see here, both a coach and an observer. When Elsie is wearing her coach hat, she can only create informal observations because a coach does not necessarily need to be a certified observer. If I were to toggle to be an observer, now Elsie's wearing her observer hat and now I can create a formal observation. Um, Isabella, do we have any questions? For me to, let me pause. Yeah, so we had one um, about data. Uh, we had somebody wondering if teachers have access to their own data that they can um, analyze themselves. Cool. Uh, so that's a great question. Um, that is a function that you would determine. So we default to having teacher visibility turned off. Uh, as far as the data, they would only be able to see on, you see this screen here, they'd be able to see just this tile that an observation took place, when it was, who did it. Uh, but you can toggle on the ability for teachers to have additional visibility if you would prefer. And then we had somebody wondering how you get this toggling option in their own dashboard. Uh, you would have to have the, the class subscription. So that's um, if just within the dashboard, you're not going to have this. This is within the subscription platform. Uh, and then if you have the subscription platform and still have this question, that would be something for your uh, the administrator of your program to add the role for you in the platform. And one more before we move on, can teachers run reports? Generally, no. Uh, they cannot see any data for anyone besides themselves. So that's where that other question about... Um, being able to toggle on and off teacher visibility. And so that that's a good point to bring back to the various roles. So the various roles also have different visibility. So as an observer, you can see any observations that you yourself have performed, but not any observations anyone else has done. As a coach, you can see any observations on the teachers that you are matched with as a coach. Um, so again, trying to kind of funnel that visibility so that folks have the visibility that they need, but don't have additional access to things. Any other questions? Uh, we just had one, one more, actually two more just came in. Do we have to get our own account or is this only through the employer? So it is a group-based subscription. So we'll go over pricing a little bit later, uh, but it is account-based. So a program would purchase a group subscription and provide subscriptions out to individuals. And then we got another interesting question. Um, somebody's asking if we have overall data for all programs using class so that they can compare their scores to other program scores. So uh, no but we have the national Head Start averages. So anything that's put into this platform, while yes, it is housed by TeachStone, we're not using this data um, to kind of do any sort of averages or anything like that. And there are so many programs that use class um, on a basis that's not necessarily reported back to us, using it just for their program, uh, for state purposes, things of that nature. So the best option would be using uh, National Head Start averages or the National Head Start updated thresholds. Uh, and I'll go over that a little bit when we look at reporting options as well. Great. Uh, and right. as far as like links to get your get started with the subscription, I think um, Megan just dropped some in the chat. We'll also include that in the email that you'll receive tomorrow. So you can get in touch with somebody about getting started. Awesome. Um, all right, so let me show creating an observation. Super easy. Um, it's all the information you would have at the top of your score sheet. So you put the date. You can select the center that you're doing the observation at. Whoever the lead teacher is, any additional teachers that are in the classroom. 
So now this data will populate to all three of these folks. The language being spoken, classroom name, uh, age level. You can select the learning environment. So denote if the classroom was a special education classroom, a dual language classroom, uh, or a family child care. You can also do double coding. So if your program is doing your own internal double coding, this would allow you to select a second um, coder, but select who the main person is who is doing the observation. These questions here can be customized. So you can select, you can type out what you want the question to be. The purpose of this is to be more like a prompt for the teacher uh, to remember what was taking place in the classroom at the time of this observation. So we were reading XYZ story, we were singing this song, that's what we were doing. Oh yes, I remember. I remember these interactions. I remember what was taking place. I can schedule this observation or I'm going to start it. And when I come in, you see again, so it's already defaulting to a 20 minute cycle. Uh, I'm in East Coast. So this is setting it to my East Coast time here. You put the number of, oh, number of adults, number of children, uh, any content types, you can star them, additional details that you might want to include. And now here we have all your scores. So when you put the scores in, you can enter your indicators and your notes. So really love that we've gotten to the indicator level here. We'll see some great functionality that that allows for as well. So I did high, medium, high, high, enter any of my notes down here. And then I check my manual. And when I look at my manual, I see high, mid, high, high, and I'm leaning five or six. I'm gonna pick a six based on what the manual says, save this, return to my observation. And then you see all of these have the green check mark to indicate they're completed. And I can do that through all of the dimensions. When I get to the bottom, you see it provides the ability to attach evidence. That evidence might be a pen and paper score sheet. So this platform is mobile responsive, meaning you can enter data directly into the platform live in the field if you're using a tablet or what have you. Uh, if, you've, if you've spoken to me before, you know I am very much a pen and paper person. Uh, so I personally would be doing pen and paper score sheet and then attaching it once I enter the information. You can also attach Maybe there's an interaction or a poster that you saw that would be good for coaching purposes or a video. So that also allows for doing remote observations. So if you have a teacher record themselves, upload it to the platform, and then you can do a video observation if you're not able to get out there to do one live, or you can just record the live observation you're doing so that the teacher can see their interactions as you're going through the coaching and do that PBC cycle. I can add cycles. When I get to the summary, you have options to enter domain or dimension summary notes. Uh, if I put these notes in here, these will also populate into the report. These fields are also customizable. So you can change what these fields say based on what you want in the report. Our suggestions are strengths. So where are they doing really great? Where are some opportunities for growth? And then what sort of action plan do you have to work on this moving forward? Okay. And then I would submit the observation when I am done. Um, Isabella, are there any questions about adding data? Yes, we have a few more questions. Um, first, somebody wonders if you could just re refresh where you access creating an observation. Yep, so when you're in, so you go to observations, observation data. And so now I'm in the observation portion and up here, this green button, create observation. Okay, and then somebody else wonders if you can live record into the system and then whether the report can show fall scores and spring spring scores 
in the same report, I imagine they'd want to compare. Yes. So no, you cannot live record uh, as far as the reporting. I'm about to jump into reporting functionality. So you'll see what some of those options are. Cool. Thank you. Anything else? We're good? Um, that looks great. All right. Awesome. Um, and so you can see too, like I can see as an observer, I can see the observations that I have uh, in progress or completed. But if I toggle to Elsie as a coach, instead of five observations that are completed, I now have 45 because I can see the observations for the teachers that I am coaching, even though, so I'm Elsie, I did this observation, I can see it. I'm Tiffany's coach. So even though I didn't do the observation, I can see it because I am her coach. Okay. So going into reports, there's a couple different ways we can access reports here. Main report, this professional development completion, we're gonna dive into this a little bit more, but this is showing when we get into the professional development portion, uh, how much professional development is being recommended to your teachers by coaches and administrators, how much of what's been recommended is actually being completed. So we have almost 16 hours recommended, a little over four hours completed. And we also see the self-study. So that is the professional development that teachers are choosing to do on their own that has not been directly shared with them. You have visibility and tracking ability of that as well. You can export this data into a CSV, so an Excel file. Observation reports. I'm going to show you right now how to look at this on a programmatic level. We can also look at it on an individualized level. So on a programmatic level, I can change uh, this date range here. So I can change this month last month, or I can just move it back to I want to go back to the beginning of April of last year. So within this county, I have 15 observations during that time. You can see here it's averaging those 15 observations and showing what the averages of the domains are. These blue lines here, goal and average, those titles are also adjustable. So going back to the question about averages and what uh, different program averages are. And I mentioned using national Head Start averages or national Head Start thresholds. You can change these titles as well as the numeric value. So you can make this goal be whatever number your goal is. Or maybe if you're a Head Start program, you want to have one of these lines be the competitive threshold, one of them be the quality threshold, and view how you're comparing to that since that's really the number that Head Starts are gonna be shooting for moving forward. Um, but however you wanna adjust these, you can and see how your program is comparing. I'm looking here on the domain level. I can also switch to the dimension level. I can look, so I am at the kind of top level right now of the regions. So within this region, I can see what counties make up this region and see what their averages are that are contributing, oh, that are contributing to what uh, the region average is. I can download the county report specifically right here. So if I want to download Albemarle County, I just click this download button. It populates. And here I have this fully developed report for Albemarle County that reviews what is class, how do we get the data defines the different domains and dimensions. And now it has those graphs we were just looking at. And these are the cities within the county that make up this county report and what their scores are. I could also download the program report from the region level, which is now gonna have those counties in here. So instead of the data here being the cities, you see the, the data is now the counties because that is what makes up the region. Classroom level data. Uh, and I can also, so the question about fall versus spring, 
I could change this to say, I want to do a comparison. Okay. So I want this one to be, let's say, August of 2022 through end of December. Well, my computer keeps acting up. And I want this one to be January through now. Um, and I could do county, compare. So there's 10 during this time frame, five during this time frame. And you can see how they've compared from one time period to the other. And this again is on a programmatic level. I'll show in a moment on an individual level, but before I do so, Isabella, are there any questions on this? We've had a number of questions come <laughs> in, as you can imagine. Absolutely. So we'll just go through that. Um, can the system do reports on the observers, show how they're progressing with completing observations or any trends with the data they are submitting? Not, no, uh, not like that. So basically with, um, this is actually a question that has come up from a program I'm working with right now. You can see the observations that are scheduled so I can see what is upcoming, but there's not, you can see on this page, there's not a download option, only the create option. So there's not currently a way to uh, kind of download what that schedule is. Or you can look at from this, oh, go back to the reporting part. You can look at on an observer basis, how many they have upcoming versus completed on this page, but again, it's not really tracking um, their, how any trends that they're doing in the observations or anything like that. This is meant more so to support the educators. So for supporting the observers, we have other, uh, other resources that are best for that. So calibrations, double coding, that sort of thing. Um, do you put in averages or is that something we have to do? I'm imagining they're asking if um, the average is automatically calculated. Yeah, the, the average is automatically calculated, which is one of the great things about this platform. You don't have to do all that math. We automatically do it in the system. Uh, not only that, if you, uh, if you do move forward with the platform, we can enter your previous data as well so that you're not starting from scratch. You can have all of that back data, run reports on that, those averages calculate, et cetera and be able to then see moving forward, how are you progressing? Um, okay, then we have another question. Somebody wants you to explain the county, the demographic slash location. They asked if they have 22 centers in one county, they would only one with work with one county, correct? Yeah, so that's more, we would figure that out on an individualized basis by the program. So we would set up what that hierarchy looks like based on what we're looking at when we set up the hierarchy of region, county, sites, et cetera, um, we collaborate with you for that, but we're looking at what reporting do you need to do? So how do you need to break down the reporting as well as uh, kind of those blinders of who needs visibility into whom, who should not have visibility into other programs. So we set it up with that in mind, um, but it is on an individualized basis. Some programs, it's a small, one site location, but we also have programs that are doing statewide implementation. So just having that variability for the different needs. Um, can we give access to our Head Start region specialist? Yeah, so, and we'll go over this when we get to pricing, but the pricing is based on the number of teachers in the platform. There is no cost for observers, for coaches, and for administrators. So that means if you're contracting with a observer in your community, you can add them to the platform at no cost. They can only see the observations they are conducting. If you have administrators in the state or other areas of the pro, uh, kind of in your organization that maybe aren't going to be doing observations or coaching, but you want them to have access, you can add them as an administrator. You just contact us to kind of work through those logistics. Great. Um, just a reminder to everybody, if you have more questions, we have had a lot come through. We're more likely to see them if you put it in the Q&A box. Um, I see somebody said that they asked a question that was answered. So Bertha, if you want to clarify that, I'm not sure what you mean by couldn't you just see which I'm missing. Um, but feel free to do that in the Q&A box. 
So I think we're all set for now. I also right. see some hands raised. Um, we don't really use that feature. If you have a question, again, just put it in the Q&A box since the chat is getting a little crowded right now. We love right. having all these questions though. It's really exciting to see such an engaged group and we hope that you're getting what you need. I mean, I, I love this platform and there's just so much that it does. <laughs> so, I mean, I go over what I can, but there's definitely going to be questions that come up because it's it's just not possible to touch on every single feature. Um, so I'm happy to answer these questions as they come up. So, uh, all right. So I'm still logged in as Elsie as a coach now. So I'm going to come over to my teachers. So I talked about how we can look at reporting on an individual basis. I'm going to look at Leanne. Uh, I like to pick on Leanne here. She has quite a bit of data for me. So I can look at her. I can see that she has been shared about an hour and a half of uh, learning resources. She's completed 17 minutes so far. She has also done 22 minutes of self-study. No upcoming observations, but there are four completed observations. If I go to professional development, this is where I can actually see the professional development that is taking place, both what's been recommended as well as what's been viewed and completed. Uh, I'll show this a little bit more when we get into the learning resources. I can see the observations that have been done. So if I want to click into a particular observation, so if I want to look at this October one, I can click into it see the cycle over cycle data, the averages, any notes that I want to look at. If there were domain summary notes, I would see them here. Dimensions, the indicator level. And then if there were summative notes. And then I can export this in a variety of ways. So I'm going to say, I don't want to share the actual scores with Leanne. I want to provide ranges to her. So I'm gonna just download easy, just like the other ones that we did. This one's a report just on the October observation for Leanne. Again, what is class, information about it. Now we have the ranges. So rather than the actual scores, here are the ranges that Leanne had in each of the dimensions. Uh, and then here's the cycle over cycle. And then if we had those notes, we would have the notes here as well. Okay. Now coming back to, if I go back to Leanne. And so if we wanna look more at comparisons or trend data for Leanne, I'm gonna stay on this reports page and change the age level. So we saw that she had one infant, one toddler, and two pre-K observations. So I'm gonna say pre-K. And right here, this is going to be the average of those two observations. I can do a comparison, which is going to be observation versus observation. And so I can pick those two dates. I can see how she, you can see like, she definitely went up in emotional support, went up in classroom organization, but went down a little bit in instructional support. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it is very normal to see as something goes up, something else comes down as you're focusing in a different area and you just adjust your focus for that improvement. Trend would be if there were three or more observations and then you'd be able to see how they are trending over time. You can do the same thing for dimensions. You can adjust these date ranges. And now this is where the individualized professional development comes in. I can look at this and see, it automatically shows me where Leanne's areas of strength are down through her opportunities for growth. As her coach, I can look at this and say, all right, I'm gonna focus on concept development with Leanne. I can click this suggested PD. It's going to pull me to the learning resources that we're going to get into now with things already filtered to be for a teacher audience in the pre-K age level, instructional support domain, concept development uh, dimension. We see we have 1,200 resources in the platform here. 
Of those, 146 of them meet this criteria. I can further filter down if I would like, if I want to make sure it's a video. So now 45 of these are going to be videos. When we look at the videos, we can see how long it's going to take. So that gets back to teachers don't have a lot of time necessarily. Do they have time to watch an eight or nine minute video? Or maybe you just wanna send them a quick two minute video. So here's a two minute video. With a two minute video, this is gonna be an exemplar of a specific dimension, which means for the dimension, we can get to the indicator level. Not only that, what we're providing here, I mentioned we do a lot of that homework before the homework, so to speak. We're calling out the indicators that are reflected in this video, the moment that it's reflected and how so. We also provide reflective questions. So as a coach, I can say, this is the video I wanna share with my teacher. They have these things to look for, the moments that they're called out. I could copy these reflective questions right here. Oh, let's just copy one of them. And I can go to recommend and continue. As a coach, I now have the option. I can recommend this resource to all teachers I'm matched with. I can recommend to individual teachers. I can also create teacher groups. So this would be if you have a cohort of teachers, maybe you're, uh, you have a cohort at different locations. Maybe you have cohorts on specific days or specific topics. So maybe you have a instructional support cohort that are the folks you're working on instructional support with. So in this instance, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna share this with my Bright Start teachers. And you see that the ones who are in that group get grayed out. I am also going to share it with Shauna. So it's gonna share it with three, four people. I can enter the notes, anything that I want to engage back and forth with. This will share out to all four teachers, but if they reply back to me, it's an individual one-to-one -one conversation still. So the group is to help the coach get the information out to more people at once, but we still wanna honor that individualized coach uh, educator relationship. Educators can reply back in the platform, or you can say something like, come to our next meeting prepared to discuss this. And then I could send the recommendation. And if we go back to looking at a teacher and the professional development that's taking place, as an administrator, I would be able to see what the coach has shared and what notes were shared. So the coach, Elsie, shared this video with Leanne with this note right here. Administrators can see that. So that if you want to provide additional coaching to your coaches and say, hey, Elsie, I see that you're focused on this area. I think maybe Leanne could use some more focus here, anything like that. You can do that sort of professional development. But then if I'm actually in the video, and you can see that Mary Bell and Leanne have different conversations with me, the administrators cannot see this back and forth dialogue so that that conversation is still private between the coach and the educator. Now I wanna show one more thing before I see if there's any more questions. Um, so coming back to our learning resources, and I showed a short video. If we look at a longer video, so nine minutes, we can't get down to all of the indicators of the various dimensions that are reflected in a nine minute video. So instead we look at the different dimensions that are reflected. And instead of getting to the indicator level, we look at both the strengths of the dimension reflected, as well as we go further into opportunities for growth that are reflected here. And I just love that teachers, there's so much support here for the teachers being able to do self-study. They can go in, watch these videos and reality check themselves with the notes that we've provided. Okay. Uh, so before I go any further, Isabella, are there any questions right now? So we have quite a few questions. <laughs> Imagine. 
Um, okay, first, I just want to address Megan shared in the comments already. We've received a lot of questions about configuring my teach stone for like needs specific to your program. Um, that's something that our team can help you with. So if you're having questions about that, definitely use the link that Megan provided um, in the chat. Um, okay. And, and to piggyback off that, yeah, if you move forward with purchasing the subscription, the next steps would be that we would meet uh, your rep, so myself or whomever else on my team, uh, your implementation contacts, so the person who sets up the platform for you, and your client success manager, who would be your go-to moving forward. And we all come together to discuss your program. I mean, we, your rep would have a conversation with you beforehand, kind of going through all of this. But once it's then finalized, sit down and really plan out what is the best structure look like for your program and your unique needs. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, moving on. As a coach, can, uh, you can actually put in scores for an can you actually put in scores for an informal observation or is this something that can only be done in a formal observation? No, oh, that is a great question. I didn't show the informal observations. I just showed that you could do it. But so as a coach, I mentioned you can't do a formal observation. I'd have to toggle to my observer role, but I can do an informal observation. Um, so I'm just gonna, it's gonna look the same as everything I was doing before here. The difference here is going to be when I start the observation, you notice things look a little different down here. I no longer have the ability to enter scores or to enter indicators so that you can focus on doing that informal observation, which for those unfamiliar with the term informal observation, it's that maybe you're not doing a full 20 minute cycle or you're not observing all of the dimensions, but you're focused on a specific domain that you want to observe for professional development purposes. So yes, there's absolutely that ability to do those informal observations. Great. Um, we have somebody asking who said, I work in a nonprofit organization that provides coaching and I use class for coaching support and calculate class reports. Um, can I use this resource? And is there a way my organization can pay for this tool without having a center or teachers? Yes. Um, it, I mean, it. I'm hesitating a little bit because that's one of those kind of more nuanced instances that it really depends on the, the specific needs. And that's where we would have somebody talk through it with you, determine what your specific use case looks like and how it would be able to be set up if it could be set up in that instance. Yeah, so when we pass along the link, definitely reach out to us so we can see if we can get you started. Um, we've had a number of questions about Child Plus. Um, somebody wonders if this is comparable to Child Plus data. Um, and it is, that's, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> so yes and no. Uh, Child Plus, our agreement with Child Plus is that they only store the averages. So our data is a deeper dive, getting not only to the cycle level, but also the indicator level. That said, fully recognize that Child Plus has features within it that our platform does not, that are non-class focused. So what a lot of programs will do is use the My Teachstone platform to enter their data. Then you can take the data so we saw that we have, you know, these, uh, um, we can go into the different observation reports and such, take these observation reports, download a CSV, and then upload that to Child Plus, where it'll then average these scores. But since the data is more specific in our platform, recommend adding it to us and then importing over rather than inputting into Child Plus, since it won't provide the detail level. Cool. Thank you. Can we add our classroom video recordings for teachers to rate themselves? Yes, but I would be curious to know more about that and what the goal is with that, but yes. Cool. Um, can you explain how to use the cycle over cycle information? I'm not sure I'm understanding the question, but that sounds like it would be something better for an individualized conversation, but it's just kind of, you know, as you're doing cycle data over the day, just having those, the averages and being able to see if there are trends to specific times of day, uh, things like that. Great. 
Um, how do you change the goal levels? Uh, that would be something that your administrator would have access to. I am not logged in as an administrator right now, so I can't fully show it, but there's there's a settings part that administrators have access to that they just click into that settings part. It's where you um, would be adding and removing users if you're an administrator, and then you can change on that page, you can change the, uh, the values and the titles and such. Um, does the report show or notes if something specific was going on when a trend or discrepancy happens on report to validate scores? That would depend on your protocol and if the observer is adding that into the notes. And then somebody asked about surveys. Can you show questions or format? Can we add specific survey questions related to the program for teachers to complete? Uh, so no, um, there's... The best way to add information that is not directly in the platform um, is to add it as an attachment to an observation. That's kind of the best workaround for it. Thank you. Um, with pricing, if and I know we are going to cover pricing in more depth very shortly, but uh, if we have a teacher leave, would we have to fill um, in that spot or would we still have to pay for that additional spot? Fantastic question. That is one of the great features of this platform. Why we mentioned staff turnover, teacher retention, all of that. We'll get into pricing um, in a moment, but the pricing not only is based on the number of teachers, but it is based on the quantity. It is not tied to the user themselves, which means if you have 30 teachers, three teachers leave, you bring three teachers on, you still have 30 teachers, so the cost has not changed. We would deactivate the folks who have left, so you still have that data. You're not losing the data from the educators who have left. And now you're activating the new users at no additional cost because the quantity has not changed. Um, as a class trainer, they, she says, they understood that they have free access. So if I wanted to add a consultant, would there be a fee or is she able to give her access? Uh, for a consultant? To add a consultant. Yeah, there's no, there's no cost to add a consultant. Um, okay, we have a question regarding the instructional support por portion of this platform. Mm -hmm. As a coach and observer, I've noticed that low scores in this area seem to be the norm. I've wondered if this could be partially because the tool is for pre-K through third grade and there are differences in the students' abilities to carry on extended conversations between four-year-olds and nine-year-olds. So depth and duration look different. Is there any discussion about a crosswalk or a different pre-K tool in the future? So that's There's a lot to that question. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on with that. Uh, I think that's a question kind of better answered in a, in a private conversation because it's kind of mixing parts of class 2008 and class second edition. Um, so I don't wanna confuse things about the platform with a conversation about 2008 versus second edition. Uh, so I would encourage whomever's asking that question to reach out to your rep and kind of discuss what those differences are um, and where you are in your transition process. Great, so I think we still have a few more questions, but we'll save those to the end um, so that Erin can get through some of the stuff on pricing that I know a lot of you are interested in hearing about. And then if you have more questions, you can continue to ask if your question wasn't answered yet, um, Megan's either going to answer it through chat or uh, we'll get to it at the end. All right, awesome. And one quick thing before we get into the pricing, uh, with these resources, you can filter not only along the left side, so I could say teacher, video, I want it pre-K, classroom organization, instructional learning formats, but I can also then layer on a specific topic. So now I have, not only is it a teacher video on instructional learning formats, but it is specifically during mealtime. Um, so you can really hone in on the specific need that you have for um, your educator. Okay, uh, so I will stop sharing my screen. And Isabella, if you want to pull the deck back up. Just one second. Actually, while you're doing that, I'm going to pull up one more thing. So I showed some of the reports that we have. 
Um, do you see now, does it have a class observation report up? Yep. Okay, so I showed some of the other observation reports. This one is going to show, I, I mentioned that we can put to the indicator level and that there was great functionality with that. Not only on the ability to drive data a little bit more so getting to that indicator level, but also we can do an automatically generated report where it has the, the feedback is automatically generated based on those indicators. So instead of you having to manually put the areas of strength, opportunities for growth, it would pull, and you can see here, so this is the automatically generated one. So areas of strength, positive climate is an area of strength. It was rated high. And we know from looking at the manual that if there are many indications, there are frequent displays, there are frequently positive communications, consistently dem demonstrate, those are all keywords that mean high. All of those indicators were high, which means positive climate was high, and this is what it means. Similarly, if we go down to areas for some growth within classroom organization, uh, rules and behaviors are consistently enforced, consistently proactive. So those are both high. Uh, uh, misbehavior rarely continues, some periodic, we know those are mid, right? So then we have mid for behavior management. So it's just pulling those indicators, determining what feedback to provide based on those indicators, automatically generated. Okay. So you saw as we went through the demo here, how you can provide individualized professional development and programmatic professional development because you can share with multiple people at once based on your programmatic data. Support ongoing observations, support ongoing coaching, and really streamline those efforts so you can take a lot of that administrative work off the plate of those doing it, streamline those efforts, maximize your time actually having those interactions and doing the other important work and take some of that extra work off your plate. You don't have to do pivot tables, work in Excel, all of that. You can do it all through this platform, even from a distance. And so lastly, pricing. Pricing always comes up as a question. Um, I personally think that this product is the most bang for your buck. Uh, there's so much functionality, so many supports. The cost starts at $2,500 for up to 25 teachers, which means if there are 10 teachers, it's $2,500. If there are 25 teachers, it's $2,500. You don't have to have a certain quantity of teachers, but the cost will be the same, whether it's 10 or 25. It's then $100 for each additional teacher. So $2,500 for 25 teachers, $3,000 for 30 teachers, et cetera. There is an additional 10% startup fee for the first year, just to have us build out that hierarchy for you, input previous data, any of those extra things we're doing to get the platform set up. Uh, but otherwise there are no kind of hidden fees, so to speak. We have starter packages and things like that that are included at no additional cost. All of this is provided within that cost. Um, and I just saw a question, if a program has vacancies, can we pay as teachers come on board? Absolutely. Um, so for that, depending on kind of what the timeline is, they might be prorated into the system, something like that. But yes, absolutely. You can add on a rolling basis during your subscription. All right. So we do have more questions. Um, how do we share the two minute videos with our teachers? Do the teachers need their password to watch the videos? Yep, so everybody who has a subscription would have access, they'd have their own account. Um, so I showed when we were looking at the video where the recommend button is, and then you would click continue, you would pick the teachers that you share with, they would receive a notification in the platform. You can also check the button to send an email notification as well, which alerts the teacher, hey, 
you have something to look at come into the platform, then they have the notification to see what to look at. Um, can you send these videos in Spanish to assist your teachers who have difficulty understanding the concept in English? Yes. Um, let me see, do I still have the platform open? I do. Um, so if you want to jump out of sharing real quick, because I didn't share this part, but you can see when I'm in here, we do have resources uh, in Spanish. And if I click into a Spanish one, you'll see that the classroom itself is a Spanish classroom. The titles, all of the notes, all of these supports are also in Spanish. Um, can we only get the videos if we purchase the platform? Uh, so these videos, yes. So we do have other videos available through video library and, and kind of other areas, but you can only get access to the learning resources through purchasing the class subscription. And then just to clarify, the subscription is per year. It is per year, yes. The 10% is only year one, and then it drops off for subsequent years. And then we have one more. Is there a printable guidebook for all of this? We have a lot to learn. Um, yes and no. So there, So kind of two parts to that. Within the platform, there is the help section, kind of different FAQs, um, area like video tutorials, things like that. So that's part one. Part two is you have a client success manager who has different resources to support you. And part three is that we do have a um, like a content inventory document because there are so many resources. So we have a breakdown of what resources do we have for infant, toddler, pre-K, et cetera, which ones are exemplars, which ones are in Spanish and kind of breaking down into those various levels. Yes. And then is training to use the platform provided with the pricing? Again, kind of yes and no. So there's, there's a kickoff uh, the administrators would have with their client success manager. Um, you could discuss with your client success manager if you needed like a, a quick meeting with teachers and such to just do your own little brief thing. There is a coaching with my TeachStone training that is offered that is not included in this cost for programs that want to do that deeper dive on how their coaches can best leverage the platform for coaching purposes. And then somebody asked about the pricing, but we just pulled that up. It's 2,500 for up to 25 teachers. And then when you add additional teachers, that's when the price goes up. Um, does the area rep for TeachStone have any materials that breaks down all that you shared today? Uh, they they should. Um, so, so depending on what, I mean, you would just reach out to your person. Um, I would be the contact for the West. There are various contacts for other portions of the country, uh, but we should all have the, the same access to all this information. Yes. And just a reminder, um, we will be giving you access to the slides that you saw today, and then you'll have a recording of this exact session with all the questions that we um, heard today and answered, and you will be receiving that tomorrow. And we'll also try to include as many links as possible, like how to contact a, a demo and, or sorry, how to contact a representative to have a more personalized demo um and to get started all right so i think that's all for today um again if you have more questions best way is to reach out to a rep i uh, will send you the link for that and megan shared the link already in the chat um we can also connect with us online we highly encourage you to follow us on linkedin and facebook uh, because we will be sharing more events like this like what is class and how to do it uh, we have upcoming webinars this summer for you to attend. You do not get a certificate for today's uh, what demo, but you will get certificates of attendance for upcoming webinars. So if you want to stay up to date on that, uh, follow us online, follow Erin on LinkedIn as well. Um, Megan shared that link, so you can do that now if you want to. Uh, we encourage that. But uh, Megan also commented, if anyone's going to interact or NHSA, Yes. Uh, I will not be at Interact, but I will be at National Head Start in Phoenix next month. Um, I think Megan and Isabella, y'all are both going to Interact. Yes, and I will be at Interact in Miami next week as well, Megan. So if you're going to be there, say hello. We love to connect with everybody. 
and we're excited to see you all. All right. And yes, yeah, if you have any other questions about Interact or how to get involved in the future, stay posted online. Awesome. Thank you all for joining. Thank you.